Hey, well, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then my name is Erica, and today I am going to be talking about some of the issues with motivational speaking, which also in entails some self help and why it can be problematic. So I have my notes right here so if I'm looking down that's what, what I'll be looking at. But one of the first things I want to mention is that a lot of motivational speaking in encompasses toxic Positivity, and what I mean by that is like these speakers will say something like, "If you're not succeeding in life, you're just not being positive enough, or you're just not working hard enough." And I feel like that is extremely dismissive of people's circum. Just answers and also his and make up oppression, but even people that have like relative privilege, like they can still be in a circumstance that may be hard for them to head 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 out of, and I feel like a lot of more motivational speaking doesn't take that into account. It also reinforces grind culture, which kind of ties into the whole toxic positivity thing. Grind culture is basically just work hard and work and work and work, and the whole like no sleep thing, rest is for the weak, which is an extremely toxic idea because people need to rest. And maybe this is a, 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 a radical concept, but I mean, I think people are worth more than what they can produce, you, you know? I feel like people are inherently v v valuable and grind culture does not acknowledge that. Grind culture only values people that, that can reduce something or or like further a, a, a company's like reach and it's just very toxic and dehumanizing and it is not good and also even when like the, the motivational speakers do acknowledge systemic oppression a lot of times the will say things like well if if I can do it anyone can do it and then that's not true because even if you are from a marginalized group you still may be able to succeed but that doesn't mean that everybody is going to have that same opportunity Unity, and I just don't think that's a healthy narrative to be pushing that if if I can do it, then you have no excuse because it's like you have no idea what's going on in somebody else's life. You have no idea what their circumstances are and you don't even know how hard they're working and e and e even if you did like that's just a really toxic mindset to have <laughs> and one example of these toxic motivational speakers is Tony Robbins now if you don't know who he is. So one of the things I 
forgot to originally say in my video was that the real issue with what Tony Robbins said about the Me Too movement is that people are just using it as an excuse to bring other people down and build themselves up, which I, I honestly don't even understand the logic there. There is none, frankly, and he has apologized for that, but I mean, t t take with that w w what you will, because I don't know if he's truly sorry, I don't know if he truly understands the issues of in what he he said because it's gross and I'm just like Ugh. his face is always red because he's always sh sh shouting he always has like veins bulging out of his neck because he's always sh shouting at everybody and and that's what he does to motivate people I think he had people at one of his seminars walking on hot rocks like it's it's that type of motivational speaking like the the whole in his mind all over matter which I mean who a certain extent and things can be but whether you can tolerate walking on hot rocks or not I don't think that says anything about your character like my, my feet are very sensitive i don't think that makes me a weak or like a, a bad person just because of that and one of the really problematic things that tony robbins has said was when back when the me too movement was becoming very big he 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 said something along the lines and I'll try to put in a clip of it or I might have to screen record if I can't find a clip or if I think it's copyrighted but anyway during when the Me Too movement was at its height when like Alyssa Milano and stuff was coming out with her story and and yeah I know Alyssa Milano, Milano did not start the Me Too movement so don't worry I'm not saying she did <laughs> she kind of co-opted it in my opinion but that's that's not what this video is about today but anyway during that time Tony Robbins said something like now all of my c c c colleagues are, are are scared and we're not going to hire we, him, him, him in anymore because we're scared that we're going to be accused of sexual har harassment and my thinking is if you're scared you're going to be accused of sexual harassment just for interacting with women, then you probably should be scared because you are doing something wrong. So yeah, he's that kind of guy. Not very good in my personal opinion, but of course you can have your own opinion. And another very toxic self-help motivational. Because I just was someone the other day, very famous man, very powerful man, who's saying how stressed he is because he interviewed three people that day. One was a woman, two were men. The woman was better qualified, but she was very attractive. And he knew I can't have her around because it's too big a risk and he hired somebody else. I've had a dozen men tell me this. 
the speaking guru type person is James Arthur Ray, and he has no relation to the singer James Arthur that I know of. But he, and I'm going to try to be very careful in telling this story because I don't want to get sued, but he basically was another guy like Tony Robbins and he had this retreat where he was helping people like grow spiritually or something like that. I, I don't even know. But a anyway, so he had this retreat that was really intense and he, he like m many motivational sp speakers, preys upon very vulnerable people. <laughs> and when I say preys upon, what I really mean for legal purposes is that his message appeals to very vulnerable people. And if you can't detect these sarcasm, then I am being sarcastic right now. But for legal reasons, I'm not being sarcastic. But please know that I don't believe his message just uh, appealed to vulnerable people, uh, 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 allegedly. But so he, he had this very vulnerable group of people and the whole like re retreat time he was making them do these ch 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 challenges and like m many like self-help gurus, the, the challenges got in, increasingly more intense. And then the, the last, the last challenge of the retreat was to stay in, the, in this thing called a, a sweat lodge. Now I'm aware that in Native um, um, American culture, there is such a thing as a, a sweat lodge, but this was not like that. This was an intensely hot thing that that James Arthur Ray told people to go in, and he told them that if they felt dizzy or weak, it was just the weakness leaving their soul. So that if they felt like something was going on with them medically to stay in there because, because it means it's working. Now, people died during that. And James Arthur Ray went to prison, but not for, for, for very long, because now he's out and he's back on his self-help BS. And, and you won't even believe what I'm about to say, to say next, or maybe you will. But James Arthur Ray, Ray wrote a, a book and he went on like a sp sp speaking tour after he got out of prison. And you know how he framed those people's deaths? He said that, that, that those had to happen to make him grow as a, a, a person. Let that sink in for a bit because that, 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 that gets me very angry. It's like, buddy, the world does not revolve around you. Not everything is about how it helps you grow as, as a person. And I think that story really sums up a lot of the issues with motivational speaking and self-help is it's a very self-centered 
thing and not in a way like self-care but in a way like everything in the world is to serve me and to help me learn a a lesson to grow as a person and yes in life you will have lessons and different things will help you grow as a person but here's where I disagree with a lot of motivational speakers and self-help gurus I don't think everything in life is about me it's not about me growing as a person because I don't believe other people are on this earth just to serve me. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. You can correct me down below in the comments if you disagree. And a lot of the issues with motivational speaking and the self help industry are that there are no real regulations so people like James Arthur Ray can pull these dangerous stunts but since there are no regulations like he's just allowed to do that and if you want to know more about the James Arthur Ray situation, I highly suggest you you listen to a, a podcast called Guru because I listen to it and that, and that's how I found out about that whole situation because uh, unfortunately it's not what widely known but I feel like it should be because it's a real issue so I will link that in, in down below but like one of the victims of James Arthur Ray one of the people that passed away in the sweat lodge her name was Kirby and her her parents are currently pushing for the for her regulations within the self help industry because currently these people with no qualifications can just call themselves a self help guru and they can spew with what is frankly BS because there's no science behind it there's no real experts in the field because you don't go to school for that type of thing and then not, and not that school is the only way to like have formal training in a, a certain field but like this is basically just made up yes that people make a lot of honey on and then that's my next point is that these seminars and stuff cost tons of all have money so by the time that people were at the hand of James Arthur Ray's little retreat they when they had already paid him thousands of dollars and they'd been f following him for a, a while so they were very Im impressionable and very open to what he had to say and I think a lot of the issues with self-help and motivational speaking is that a lot of people who play devil's advocate will say oh well these people have free will they're willingly choosing to follow James Arthur Ray's advice but I don't know how true that is because again these are very vulnerable people and and they're willing to listen to anything because they're in a very vulnerable point in their lives like many 
people have gotten out of toxic relationships or they've lost their job or they just feel very lost in life so they try to turn to self-help to improve themselves and they end up falling victim to people like James Arthur Ray. Please don't sue me because I'm just telling the truth. And I think well, what's extremely interesting is there are a lot of a lot of similarities between self help and motivational speaking and cults and a B U has I V E relationships. Sorry, YouTube just doesn't like that word, and I'm not trying to get demonetized here. And because I find, and this is just me, but it seems to be like in the beginning there's a lot of love bombing and it's very uplifting and they basically just like build you up just to then tear you down again and give you hope that it's going to get better when in reality when it gets better it only gets better for a small amount of time. Hi, and this mirrors a lot of cults and a lot of cult leaders who like basically see themselves as a godlike figure and they like that other people are following them and listening to every word they say which can become very dangerous when these people have no real expertise and they're just making it up as they go along. And they're only leading people to feed their own ego and to make money. They're not leading people because they want to help people. They, they do it under the guise of wanting to help people, but, but I don't truly believe that, that they do want to help people because if they did, they wouldn't do things like make people stay in a, in a sweat lodge until they die. Like if you want to help people, you don't tell people to and do that. But again, that's just my opinion. And I also believe that a lot of motivational speaking and self-help, and and this isn't just something I believe, this is also based in fact, because they have ties to MLMs, which if you don't know what MLMs are, it stands for multi-level marketing companies, which is basically when like direct sellers sell a product, and then <coughs> my, my, my dogs are barking. I'm so sorry. <laughs> As I was saying before my dogs started barking is MLM consultants or sellers who make money based off of how much the people under them sell and how many people there are under them. And so it's basically a, a, a legal version of, of a a pyramid scheme because the people at the top make the most and a lot of times the people at the bottom don't even make a lot of money.
and a lot of motivational speakers and self-help gurus go to these MLM conferences and speak at them to motivate the sellers and it's one of the tactics that the companies use to get people to stay in the company because basically they say if you're not making money in this company and if if you're not succeeding it's your fault it's because you're not trying hard enough it's because you're not mo 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 motivated enough so it really fits into that whole thing perfectly and it's a whole big toxic circle of basically BS and toxic positivity and grind culture. And I think we hit that this is the end of this video. And thank you so much for watching. If you've learned something or if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And, and if you have not already and you who would like to see more of my content please consider hitting that subscribe button thank you so, so much for, for watching and i hope to see you again next time bye